Remember the Wii U? No, not the Wii, the Wii U. This thing. Well, as of late, Nintendo have been shifting a large chunk of their games over to the Switch, with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8, Pokemon Tournament, Bayonetta 2, Hyrule Warriors, Tropical Freeze, and even some third-party ones like LEGO City Undercover. And we don't think that's the end of it. The Wii U had a ton of great games, but with them now being on a stranded system that very few owned or currently play, we're gonna bet that more than a few are currently in the port pipeline. In fact, we're so confident that let's just put the unlikely ones out of the way first. Star Fox Zero, Wii Party U, Mario Party 10, Nintendo Land, and Game & Wario are all very unlikely to come to the Switch due to their reliance on dual displays. For instance, Star Fox Zero has many scenes where you're prompted to view a third-person perspective on the TV while you fly under enemies and shoot their weak points on the gamepad. Examples like this demand two points of view, so I'm pretty sure Star Fox isn't going anywhere. We're also not including Super Smash Bros or Super Mario Maker, as not only do we already have a pretty in-depth video for Smash, but those two sit on the border of whether they'll be ports or sequels. We're also disregarding Splatoon, as the majority of its maps can be found in Splatoon 2, and Yoshi's Woolly World, as Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World launched only one year ago on 3DS, and we have an entirely new Yoshi game coming later this year. Kirby and the Rainbow Curse is also unlikely, as it's so touch-dependent. Though it would be nice to play it in HD, as the gamepad's 480p screen kind of limited the art style of this game. With that said, here are 10 Wii U games I feel could still be ported to the Nintendo Switch, ranked in order of likelihood. Number 10. Super Mario 3D World and Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Alright, so we're cheating a bit here with the dual entries, but both 3D World and Captain Toad share the same pros and cons when it comes to a Switch port. They both have levels that rely on that darn gamepad, whether it's 3D World's Puff Prod Peaks with its reliance on touch, which Undock Switch has, and then there's the microphone, which, well, I guess you have with a mobile app? Yeah, we can't see that one making it in. Now true, Nintendo Land bypassed microphone inputs in Donkey Kong Crash Course by allowing you to simply hold the X button, but touch is still a major major part of this level and it's mandatory in a handful of others too. And if anything, Captain Toad makes even greater use of the gamepad, with a larger selection focusing on manipulating puzzles through touch controls. Now it's possible these levels could be revamped, replaced or removed, but we especially can't see that being the case with Captain Toad. It's too much. Touch controls. <laughs> So why could they come to Switch? Well, they both rank in the best-selling Wii U games and are some of the highest-rated games on the platform. Plus, think of the multiplayer possibilities. Switch is a platform all about sharing your game anywhere with anyone, and that would lend itself so well to 3D World. Multiplayer could get a little rough in New Super Mario Bros., but with how much more open these 3D worlds are, you won't want to kill your friend this time. Though maybe having a different button for grab would be a good idea if you bring this to Switch, Nintendo. There are more than two buttons to use after all. Both of these games, in theory, lend themselves well to the Switch, but with the gamepad roadblocks along the way, maybe sequels are more likely. For that reason, we're giving 3D World and Captain Toad to the somewhat likely stamp. Number 9. Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater Remember Project Zero Maiden of Blackwater? No? Well, I wouldn't blame you. Outside of Europe, this game was only released on the Wii U eShop, and even in Europe, the only way to get your hands on the game was in this expensive collector's edition. Yeah, ever since Nintendo got their hands on this series, their output has been close to non-existent, especially in the West. But they're great games, and my favourite just so happens to be Maiden of Blackwater. The game takes place in Mount Hakami, otherwise known as the Suicide Forest. Yeah, that's already a scary premise. Mix that with patented Japanese horror, and you have a game I couldn't play without someone else in the room. I mean... I laugh in the face of danger. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Maiden of Blackwater does use the gamepad, but mostly just for gyro controls, which both the Joy-Con and Pro Controller already have going for them, so not a great deal is lost by ditching the second screen. Only problem is the game didn't exactly set the charts on fire. In fact, there was hardly even a spark. We have to wonder if there's even an audience for this port, as yeah, it would function, but how many people would it really appeal to? Perhaps bundle it in a Project Zero collection featuring the entire series, or the unlocalized Fatal Frame 4, which only came out on the Wii in Japan. The game even launched before Amiibo were a thing in Japan, so it'd be cool to get our hands on the Zelda and Samus costumes early, using the respective Amiibo. We're also giving Maiden of Blackwater the stamp of somewhat likely. Number 8. Paper Mario Color Splash It's no secret that Andre is the world's biggest fan of Paper Mario Sticker Star, so when Color Splash built upon those mechanics, he was over the moon. 
Seriously though, Color Splash took one of Nintendo's most disappointing premises and turned it into something actually worth putting your time into. It's full of bright, colourful worlds and some of the best writing this series has ever seen. I'm still not the biggest fan of the battle system, but it does enough to carry this jolly adventure forward. And though it does require the gamepad, I never felt it was necessary. Basically, the UI remains on the gamepad, but the combat stays focused on the TV. Hmm, I wonder what it would look like if you merged the two together. Like the first Paper Mario game perhaps? Sure, selecting cards might take a tad longer when you're not swiping with the touchscreen, but I see no real drawback for ditching the gamepad in this game. As one of the Wii U's last major games, we'd love for more people to experience this adventure. Though at the same time, a sequel using the same beautiful engine of Color Splash would be even better, as I'm not sure how exciting people would find a port of this game. It's good, but it's not a classic like the first two games. And for that reason, we're giving Color Splash the stamp of likely. Number 7. Tokyo Mirage Sessions this game is really good. No, really. It may be a collaboration between Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei while resembling neither of those games, but judged solely as its own thing and TMS is not only a brilliant RPG, but it's one of the very best from Atlas. I'm not into Japanese idol culture myself, but the brilliant combat system and dungeon design are something any RPG fan will adore. In fact, the combat system might be one of the very best things to grace a turn-based RPG, and I'm willing to bet Nintendo and Atlas want to sell a few more copies of this. Sure, there are instances that use the gamepads, like reading text messages on your phone, but there's no real reason that can't be in a sub-menu. With Fire Emblem launching later this year, Tokyo Mirage Sessions would be a great way to keep up the series' momentum, and if anything, it's my personal mission to get more people to play this game. It would even be neat to include some new scenarios based off new elements from the upcoming Switch Fire Emblem. Or hey, maybe even provide an English dub for this version, as the Wii U localization only offered English text with Japanese voices. And for that reason, we're giving Tokyo Mirage Sessions the stamp of likely. Number 6. Pikmin 3 Ever since the new play controls of the Wii version of Pikmin, it's been hard to go back to the original GameCube control scheme, and while the Wii U's Pikmin 3 includes these as a default, I'm willing to bet a lot of us played the game with a Wii remote and nunchuck. Of course the Switch can replicate this with gyro pointing, but it's just not precise enough and desyncs constantly, as demonstrated here with World of Goo. This means we'll essentially be stuck with the gamepad controls if Pikmin 3 ever comes to the Switch. And these aren't bad, as they also offered some neat touch controls with the content update, but IR pointing and Pikmin go together like a blue Pikmin and a body of water. The gamepad was mandatory for map controls and micromanaging, but I see no reason why this can't be shifted to a poor screen. Heck, the gamepad was always a little awkward for this game, especially if you're using another control scheme and have to keep the gamepad nearby. That being said, Pikmin 3 is a wonderful game, and it's fully playable without both a second screen and a Wii Remote, providing no real excuse for this not to be on Switch. It just may not be the definitive version. Although, seeing this spectacular fruit in 1080p is pretty convincing. Seriously, five years since this game launched, and we still haven't seen better looking fruit in a game. And man, this pizza! And for that reason, we're giving Pikmin 3 the label of... Likely. Number 5. New Super Mario Bros. U and Luigi U. Now hold the phone, I really don't want this. There's been a New Super Mario Bros. game on every system since the DS, so why would Nintendo break tradition and just port the Wii U game on Switch? Well, because they can. New Super Mario Bros. U may be one of the best-selling Wii U games, but it only did 5.75 million copies, which, in the grand scheme of things, is pretty small for this series. And I hear you, U is in the game's title, but that didn't stop Super Mario 64 DS, and I don't think it would stop them here either. With how well Versus Super Mario Bros. is selling on the eShop, it seems people are thirsty for a new 2D Mario, and the Switch lends itself so well to the local multiplayer of these games. But simply porting Mario U and Luigi U isn't enough. We want some interesting twists, like how about some female characters this time, like Pauline or Toadette. And let's be honest, who would really miss the gamepad in this game? Sure, placing blocks could be helpful when obtaining star coins, but it always came across as an afterthought. Beyond that, Mario U is a really marvellous Mario game that doesn't always get the respect it deserves. Level design is on par with series best, and some levels showcase insane Insane originality. We want more of this Van Gogh level, and for that reason, New Super Mario Bros. U gets the label of very likely. Number 4. Pushmo World. Intelligent Systems made some incredible games last gen, but the 3DS's Pushmo was one of the cleverest in my opinion. It's an ingenious puzzle game built around the simple aspect of pulling and pushing blocks. There was even a level editor that allowed you to make your own puzzles. On 3DS you could only share these with a QR code, and enter the big feature of the Wii U's Pushmo world, you can actually share your levels and have people play them without them jumping through hurdles. For what it's worth, I'd love to see Crashmo get the HD world treatment too, or bundling the whole series together on Switch would make this a must-have 
for puzzle fans. There's no real gamepad use either, though making your own levels with the touchscreen is certainly easier, something the Switch can still do when undocked. There's not really much more to say about this one. Bring these wonderful games to Switch! And for that reason, Pushmo World receives the stamp of extremely likely. Number 3. The Wonderful 101 Platinum and Nintendo have an interesting relationship. Bayonetta 2 didn't exactly sell that well on Wii U, but here we are with Bayonetta 1 plus 2 ports for the Switch, and a third game on the way exclusively for the Switch. The Wonderful 101 also didn't sell too well, but going by precedent, we're willing to bet that doesn't matter when it comes to Nintendo and Kamiya. In fact, Kamiya has even stated he wants to see the game on Switch, and Platinum even tweeted this picture showing members of the Wonderful 101 playing on a Switch. I don't think that's just harmless art, that's a full-on tease. But what about the gamepad? The Wonderful 101 was a game about drawing a shape and having your team merge into it. Now you could use the right stick to draw as well, but that was a little tricky for certain manoeuvres. Not impossible though. I wouldn't be shocked if the touch aspect remains when playing undocked, but Doc simply uses the right stick or even a quick instance of gyro controls, as they're unlikely to desync when only being active for a few short seconds. There were also scenes where you go into a building and the viewer shift to the gamepad, but just look at what happens when you play Four Swords Adventures without a GBA. You get a picture-in-picture -picture view, and that's exactly what the Wonderful 101 could do as well. So there'd need to be a few changes, but I'd be shocked if the Wonderful 101 doesn't happen. In fact, I'd sit in a puddle, and for that reason, the Wonderful 101 receives the stamp of extremely likely. Number 2. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD Yeah, I'm cheating again. Nintendo had a phase of remastering all the 3D Zeldas last gen, and for what it's worth, we'd take ports of Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D too, and a remaster of Skyward Sword, but let's focus on one thing at once. Well, two things. Both Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD feature some wonderful quality of life improvements that alleviated many of the flaws of the GameCube originals. Sailing in Wind Waker HD was a breeze with the new Swift Sail, and many steps were taken to ensure the Triforce quest didn't make you want to cry. Twilight Princess HD had less drastic elements like not having to fish twice in the tutorial and collecting fewer tiers of light. Both were improved with the gamepad UI, but they also featured full Pro Controller support, so ditching the hulking brick Sorry Wii U, I enjoyed our time together. Kind of. Wouldn't be a major loss. Breath of the Wild still selling ridiculously well, so maybe these two are a while off. But with that said, Hyrule Warriors is coming in just a few months. Maybe the time's come for more Zelda on the Switch. And if that's so, I think these two are extremely likely. Number 1. Xenoblade Chronicles X We're incredibly thrilled that with Xenoblade 2, the series is now capable of installments selling over a million units, and maybe with a Switch port, Xenoblade X could possibly reach that prestige. The biggest evidence suggesting a Switch port comes from Monolith Soft President, who stated with 4Gamer.net, Personally, since there are times where I happen to want to play Xenoblade Chronicles X, I get the feeling that it would be nice to play on Nintendo Switch. Of course, that's something I'll think about when discussing user demands and future plans with Nintendo. I'm thinking the doors are pretty wide open, and with the success of Xenoblade 2, now's a good time for Nintendo to give the rest of the series another shot. A remaster of the first game makes a lot of sense, and hey, even a HD Xenosaga trilogy with Bandai Namco. The only hurdles for Xenoblade Chronicles X come from storage. If a Switch game is over 16GB, then they tend to have a download portion, and fans don't react well to that at all. It is possible they can compress the 20GB game down, as seen with other Wii U ports like Pokémon, but storage and price is a big hurdle for X. It also featured gamepad support with a map on the second screen, but this is something that can easily be reworked. It even supported the Pro Controller. Plus, we're still waiting to find out what the after credit scene was. And for that reason, Xenoblade Chronicles X gets the stamp of only a matter of time. And there we have it. Did I miss any Wii U games that you think will end up on Switch? Be sure to subscribe to Game Explain for loads more on Nintendo Switch and other things gaming too. Catch you next time. Bye.